There are almost countless candidates. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 LGBTQ plus couples in TV shows. No, I, I understand. You have to be with the person you lo love. I am. For this list, we're looking at TV's greatest LGBTQ plus couples. As the focus will be on live action couples, animated pairings like Avatar, Korra, and Asami will be excluded, at least for today. You don't need to apologize for anything. I'm just so happy you're here now. Number 10, David Rose and Patrick Brewer, Schitt's Creek. Everyone's favorite sitcom about a socialite family that literally ends up in Schitt's Creek has proven time and time again to be skilled at handling themes concerning identity. Um, I do drink red wine, but I also drink white wine. Oh. And I've been known to sample the occasional rosé. And a couple summers back, I tried a Merlot that used to be a Chardonnay. Starting as business partners before taking the next step, David and Patrick are simply at their best when together, be it romantically or as the owners of Rose Apothecary. And it can't be wrong, take my heart and make it strong, babe, cause you're simply the best. Better than all the rest. These two are made for each other, with David's sarcasm and creativity being well matched by Patrick's more professional and grounded nature. As an extension of Schitt's Creek's feel good tone, David and Patrick's relationship is sweet, uplifting, and a ton of fun. And this just felt like the perfect place to ask you to marry me. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Easiest decision of my life. <laughs> Number nine, Mason Hewitt and Corey Bryant, Teen Wolf. Hey guys. Are you volunteering for the library cleanup too? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes, yeah. Mason and Corey's chemistry is undeniable from the start, even if their relationship takes a while to come to fruition. However, sparks begin to fly halfway through season five. You have no idea what to say to me, do you? Not really, no. Can I ask you a question then? <laughs> yeah, sure. What are you doing Saturday night? While these two meet in less than ideal circumstances, as Corey had just been transformed into a chimera and Mason would be used as a vessel for the beasts of Jovadan, both guys repeatedly show an unflinching willingness to risk everything for each other. Even as members of warring gangs, Mason and Corey continue to prioritize each other because certain things are more important than pack loyalty. Stay alive with me. Number 8. Nicole Hot and Waverly Earp, Winona Earp. Hey, excuse me. What is your problem? What happened, friends? With all the resurrected outlaws, vampires, and supernatural creatures running amok, it's a wonder anything positive can flourish in the town of Purgatory. Despite the best efforts of a possessive demon and Champ Hardy, Waverly and Nicole's bond blooms beautifully after the two first meet in Shorty's bar. Along with being beyond adorable together and sharing some truly memorable makeout sessions, Waverly and Nicole support each other unconditionally, even when they're individually struggling with their own identities. Whether celebrating Christmas or owning some vampires, Nicole and Waverly are always melting hearts. Let's still be standing here. <laughs> Do you hate it? No, I don't hate it. Of course I know. <laughs> Number seven, Brian Kinney and Justin Taylor, queer as folk. How's it going? You had a busy night? Just uh, checking out the bars, you know? Focusing squarely on the lives of gay men and women, queer as folk helped pave the way for many of the other couples on this list. Lindsay and Melanie's mature but difficult relationship deserves an honorary mention, but Brian and Justin's romance serves as the main thrust for the majority of the five seasons. Guess what? Yes. Yes. I will marry you. I will marry you. Much older and free-spirited, Brian is idolized by the 17-year-old Justin, who is only beginning to come to terms with his orientation during the first season. Kind of young, aren't you? In some ways, Brian is the hero that motivates Justin to accept himself. On the other hand, in Justin, Brian found something more meaningful than one night stands. Number six, Santana Lopez and Britney S. Pierce, Glee. 
Starting as friends with benefits and ending with a joint wedding alongside Kurt and Blaine, Santana and Brittany go through quite a lot during Glee's run. Is that really how you feel? Uh, yeah. Along with lovers, Santana and Brittany are best friends, ones who also happen to complete each other. Britney's enthusiasm and kindness rub off on Santana, while also giving the cheerleader the confidence to sing her feelings. And I feel that when I'm with you, it's alright. I know it's right. Something similar happens in reverse, with Santana protecting the often naive Britney. Santana and Brittany both go through journeys of self-discovery, and the trials can be overcome because they are in this together. You know, it's funny. I spend months tangled up in knots, and in five minutes, you strain me out. Number five, Cameron Tucker and Mitchell Pritchett, Modern Family. We adopted a baby. <laughs> Her name is Lily. Oh. Exciting! Uh, just turn it off. The living embodiment of the phrase opposites attract, Cam and Mitchell could not be more different, yet they're also kind of perfect for each other. Since Modern Family is a comedy, Cam and Mitchell shine the brightest while at their funniest, with their conflicting personalities producing one of the strongest dynamics on the show. A little bit louder now. Shout! A little bit louder now. Shout! Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> really, Cam? My job is at stake here and Oh, who are we kidding? You can obviously hear me. The couple is more than just a source of great comedy, though, as Cam and Mitchell challenge conventional gender roles by re-examining what it means to be masculine or feminine, often blending the best qualities of both in a way that's both hilarious and inspiring. But I just wanted you to see what its definition for mother was on it. It's warm, nurturing, supportive. I, you know, maybe when the world sees you Not as a mom... Not just the world. Fine, fine, me too, but... Maybe this is what we're seeing, and I don't know why that's such a bad thing. It certainly doesn't make you less of a man, right? Number four, Steph and Lena Foster, The Fosters. I told them I met a woman that I can't live without, and I, I belong with you, Lena. Centering around a lesbian couple who adopt four children of various ethnicity, along with having one of their own, The Fosters is a refreshing take on the family drama genre. Steph and Lena are rightfully the stars of the show, and their relationship is one that feels authentic. You are a piece of work, but you're my piece of work. These two undoubtedly love each other, so much so, Steph and Lena get married twice throughout the series. That said, The Fosters does not shy away from testing the couple's bond. How are you okay with losing our home, all the memories that we have here? I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. With the stress that comes from parenting a large family and working challenging jobs, Steph and Lena disagree often. But that's just one part of their enduring relationship. Number three, Ian Gallagher and Mickey Milkovich, Shameless. Shameless does not have time for the picturesque or easy, so Ian's relationship with the thuggish Mickey is anything but romanticized. Despite multiple breakups and the occasional stint behind bars, Mickey and Ian are naturally drawn to each other. In the earliest seasons, these two engage in an intense but borderline toxic secret romance while Mickey struggles to come out to his family. You don't understand this Oh, I do understand. I understand better than anyone that you're afraid of your father. You're afraid of your wife. You're afraid to be who you are. When Mickey is finally in a good place, Ian begins to spiral out of control, ensuring the couple only experiences short bursts of happiness. I'm worried about you. I love you. Mickey and Ian might occasionally bring out the worst in each other, but the couple represents Shameless at its best. Number two, Clark Griffin and Lexa, The Hundred. The brightest flames burn the quickest. Maybe we do. One is the leader of the Sky People, the other is in charge of the Grounders. Clark and Lexa are both young, saddled with responsibility, and willing to make the tough decisions. I've come to make you an offer. This is not a negotiation. Considering their shared similarities, it's not surprising these two ended up falling for each other, creating a love powerful enough to unite clashing clans. You couldn't kill Quint. You couldn't leave me to die. That was weakness. I thought love was weakness. 
Mockery is not the product of a strong mind, Clark. The Hundred's Earth is too hostile for anything pure to endure for too long. However, while it lasted, Clark and Lexa brought desire, love, and comfort to an otherwise harsh world. Just saying, if you're not watching Schitt's Creek, you should be. If only to see how Patrick helps David come out of his shell and just how darn cute they are together. These honorable mentions do also have some excellent moments, but number one had such a good payoff. You told me not to do this until I was ready. Do what? Because what we had was so beautiful. I mean, at least we're in it together. Yeah. I'm crying because no one's ever defended me before. Because I miss you too. No, Mom, I'm her girlfriend. No sabes lo que dices. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Magnus Bain and Alec Lightwood, Shadow Hunters. You never see so amaze me, Alec. Yeah. What did I just do? A ship so irresistible, Shadow Hunters just went ahead and devoted an entire episode to it, not to mention the trilogy of books dedicated to Magnus and Alec's adventures. From the moment they meet in a club, Magnus and Alec only have eyes for each other, even if the timing isn't quite right for the couple to be together. You've unlocked something in me. Throughout all three seasons, Magnus and Alec's interactions are defined by warmth, unbridled desire, and provocative flirtation. At times, Malik is the stuff of fairy tales. At others, Magnus and Alec present an attainable ideal worth striving for. The love I have for you is a love that knows no bounds. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.